live from our basement studios in suburban Chicago. It's That Wine Pod. Hey, I am Pete and my co-host sitting across from me, the Prosecco Pugilist, Dino Mike. Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, 2020. This show has spanned multiple decades. It has. Two decades now <laughs> that we've been on this show. You know what I was thinking about? It, it feels like just yesterday we started this. I, <laughs> it feels like it, right? I, I was thinking about this, too. Like, 20 years ago, the Y2K scare. Yeah. Remember? Like, we were all on edge. Yeah. Like, what was going to happen? Are all the planes going to crash? Will we have any money? Right, right. There's been some fun podcasts recapping uh, Fish played New Year's Eve in the Everglades, and that was... Kind of a, a theme was to be off the grid and somewhere remote and you don't have to worry about any of that stuff and uh yeah we didn't really care about y2k at the turn of the millennium 20 years ago nice um, if they were playing in the everglades did they do like their version of like crocodile rock <laughs> are they crocs in the everglades or alligators i don't even know um i don't know if it's both yeah, I don't know either. I'm going to go one of each. Yeah, yeah, we'll just go both. <laughs> but they, they were definitely on site, and they had to tenant, you know, had to deal with that when they were setting up the grounds. It was on a uh, Seminole Indian reservation out there also. Nice. Um, it was pretty cool. But yes, Y2K. Now, now what is it? Uh, I, well, we don't even want to get started with what all our problems are right now, 2019 yeah. into 2020. Yeah. But we're going to talk about... We'll get into it here. A little bit of... What happened in 2019? That's our that's our theme for today. It's yeah, a little recap. Yeah, year review. But first, first, what's in that bottle? All right. So in that bottle today, uh, we're starting the year off right here, Pete. Uh, we've got some bubbles. Oh, uh, gotta love the bubbly. These bubbles are from Italy. This is the wine of the year Who that we're, we're gonna start off with from the wine enthusiast. Oh. The, the Wine Enthusiast does a top 100 list called The Enthusiast 100, and they pick this wine here that we're popping open, number one wine of the year, the Rustico, that's the brand name of it, uh, Prosecco by Nino Franco. Oh, okay. So that seems unusual that we'd see a, a Prosecco, kind of an everyday Prosecco. Oh, it looks like... We had a little issue here with the opening. Yeah, look, it's it, it's already kind of a, a little bit of a piece of junk. Like the wire cage, when I was twisting it, it just twisted right off. Ooh. So we got that off, so that's good. That's good. And I'm glad that it didn't just pop open, like shoot you in the eye. S no. Uh, now, see, that's a professional. I should have held that a little closer to the mic. I oh, I like it. Maybe, maybe I, that picked it I, up. Hopefully, hopefully it did. I could hear it. I, that's a professional opening, some bubbly right there. Just a little whisper, not a big pop. That's right. You don't you don't want the big pop. You definitely just want the little the little whisper. So there's a little uh, little rinse in the glass and first taste. Yeah. So, Mike, we're we're drinking out of big glasses. Mm. I, I mean, we got to address that too, right? Yeah. Uh, champagne flutes. They just don't do the wine justice. They're festive. They're fun. You see the bubbles shooting up them, things like that. But you should really treat your bubbly like you treat your wine. Give it a nice home. A nice wine glass is really perfect, especially, now we're just having some Prosecco here, but it's not just some Prosecco, it's the wine of the year wine. Prosecco. Uh, but if you're having like a nice champagne, a nice grower champagne, a vintage champagne, even non-vintage champagne in a wine glass, really unlocks the aromatics just like it does for wine and you can really appreciate the flavors a lot more so but uh yeah so this got you know 94 points whoa from the wine enthusiast and once again landed the number one spot of the wine of the year so it's pretty wide you know widely available uh, i found a bottle and said this this has got this is going to be perfect to kick off the year um and go along with the theme of you know, kind of recapping 2019, including some of the top picks, the top wines from the various magazines and stuff like that. So what did, I just out of curiosity, price range of, of this one? Sure, actually the wine enthusiast quotes 20 bucks. Okay. So, and we've, we've got some data here for like the top 10 w wines on this list. This took the number one spot. 
is well below the rest of the, the crowd. That's number, what I was wondering. Number two through uh, ten. And what's interesting is the enthusiast also does a top 100 values of the year. Uh, I think those are $15 and under, though. Okay. Where this one, they quote 20 Now, this was 17 bucks. That's that's probably the typical retail for this wine. Somewhere around the sixteen ninety nine range or so. All right, so but, somewhere between 17 and $20. Yeah. yeah give or take. Yeah, you shouldn't pay more than 20 If you are, you're probably at a specialty shop or uh, somewhere really off the beaten path. But um, this is a sub-$20 uh, Prosecco. Yeah, I, I find it interesting that they chose this wine. I mean, for sure. And can't wait to talk a little bit about what else was chosen. But this is a this is an older... Prosecco producer, 100 years, it says right on the neck. Yeah, so that, and mm, interesting, 100 year anniversary, taking down the number one spot. Um, I mean, congratulations to the Franco family, but yeah, this was founded in 1919 by a gentleman named Antonio, uh, Antonio Franco. Uh, following Antonio was Nino, and that's the name of the estate now, Nino Franco. And then I think there was a Silvio or Silvia that's doing it now. And one person prior to that, it's at least four generations since 1919 when this was founded. So yeah, a hundred year old estate uh, located in Valdo Biadene, uh, which is your kind of home for the best quality Prosecco's in Italy. And, you know, I think the Rustico overall is maybe one of the most recognized Prosecco names and brands out there. Interestingly enough, it was the first Prosecco I learned about. We used to pour this by the glass at Timponi's. It was with Vindavino. Uh, wow, Vindavino. Back in the day, yeah. And I remember having the Rustico as our like house Prosecco back when I was learning what Prosecco even is. So a uh, little bit of nerdy tech info for you. Okay, Prosecco, you can go ahead and refer to the grape as Prosecco if you want, but it's, also, it's called Galera. G-L-E-R-A, that's the name of this grape, it's 100%. And the difference between Prosecco and other sparkling wines that you wanna really take note of is the, this is not fermented in the bottle. It is, it, the wine is fermented in stainless steel tanks and the secondary fermentation that creates the bubbles is done in tank, the, called the cuvee close method. And basically what that means is you end up getting a little bit lighter style of sparkling wine. When it's fermented in a bottle, it's just a little bit more robust, uh, fuller in terms of the bubbles, in terms of the sparkle and things like that, so. Nice. And non-vintage or vintage on this guy? Um, this is, it's a non-vintage bottling, but that's a great question. I, I don't know how much of the fruit that goes into it is from one year versus a blend. So. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was a non-vintage. Um, they, they, they make they make some vintage. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, uh, it's on the top of tip of my tongue. There's the the one that Bevuma brings in. Um, Balan. Balan, yeah, the Balan is vintage dated, and that's the first prosecco I have ever seen vintage dated. Now there could be proseccos made with all the fruit from the same harvest, but they're not going to put that on the label necessarily. Maybe it's a lot number or some other weird code that really doesn't stick out to the consumer. But yeah, the Balan is vintage dated. Um, but for the most part, Prosecco is just as fresh as, as can be and, and non-vintage dated. I guess what I was really curious about, I, I was excited to taste this, right? Just knowing how much wine enthusiasts loved it. And I was very curious how it kind of differed because this is something that I've had consistently over the past 15 years you know, drinking wine. And it, to me, it was always very, it was always good, right? It was always a very solid choice. And I was wondering, like, would this one really, really stand out compared to, you know, 13 or 14 other vintage, non-vintage, but years that I had tasted of it? Of this particular yeah, wine. of this particular wine. Yeah, it'd be fun to somehow try that and, you know, have a vertical where it's all fresh, right? But... Um, I, I doubt it. I doubt it too, because that, that can be part of the point of these wines is to be fairly ubiquitous, right? You've you've talked about it, right? It's Coca Cola, right? And there's sixty thousand cases of this stuff made, right? It's not an artisan wine, right? It's widely available. It, they're not going to really run out of this one. 
because when they do, it's non-vintage. They'll just bring whatever's next. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's just sixty thousand, sixty thousand, sixty thousand, and it's just kind of constantly. And they don't even have a. I didn't see a lot number on here. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, there's a little something on the UPC here. L nineteen one three six. Oh, okay. So they've got um, some so sort of code. code. That, that could some be sort of lock code. Nineteen. Yeah. Twenty nineteen. I'm not sure. Imported by Terlato. I think it was around maybe 2013 or so that that Terlato took over this um, estate as far as being the importer into uh, into the United States. All right. All that said, what do you think of it? Yeah, you know, I'm sitting here tasting it, and I, I mean, it's quite nice. I I can't wrap my head around giving this wine a massive score um, in terms of, you know, going into the mid upper nineties. And I can't wrap my head around this being like the number one pick for 2019. I'd really love to know kind of how, how that happened, but it is quite nice. It, I, so lots of like springtime flowers in there, mm -hmm. um, beautiful citrus notes. Um, there's, you know, really fresh, like, you know, pear, a little more pear than apple. Yeah. Me. Uh, it, creamy almost on the mouth too, yeah. which I think is a little bit unusual for this. I don't remember that kind of, that kind of creaminess. I'm not sure I could keep saying that, but creamy, creamy. Um, I, I'm just not sure I, I remember that this one being such a lush mouthfeel. Yeah. I mean, so maybe it is a little different from that perspective. It's, it's tasty and you know, long finish. Um, you know, pretty bright acidity, but not like screaming crazy high. You might, you might not need to clean your microphone today. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, overall, I mean, I think it's a well-balanced wine, some really nice flavors in there. Just for Prosecco, I mean, Prosecco is simple. This is like Sunday brunch, um, casual drinking, take it to a BYOB. Maybe it's your starter wine. You don't even remember it by the end of the evening kind of a thing. Um, so to get all this attention and spotlight in this in this top list. Now, if if you don't mind, we can 